All right, in the last video, we gave you that nice conceptual rundown of what Z-Spheres are, how they work, the kind of rundown of the workflow, and probably half of you skipped it because you didn't actually see ZBrush on the screen. So maybe you've jumped right to this video. Yeah, I skipped it. Yeah, I, I know. Well, you kind of stepped out halfway through and got yeah. coffee, and I understand. In this video, I'm going to give you a practical rundown of using Z-Spheres in kind of a down-and-dirty fashion, showing you the most basic essential skills you have to have. Yeah, see, much better than just drawing on Photoshop. Absolutely. So let's start off by bringing in a Z-Sphere, because this is the, the critical first step. Come over here to your tool panel and click anywhere for any one of the tools, and this will bring up your tool selection window. Grab Z-Sphere if you don't see it already. Now, to bring in a Z-Sphere, just click and drag here inside your document. It doesn't matter what orientation it gets. So if you find yourself you know, rotating at some funny angle, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Because, again, your view inside of ZBrush is based on the tool. You don't really have a 3D scene here. So if we need to straighten this up, we can do it just by spinning the tool around. Right. Next, immediately go to Edit Mode. Click on the Edit button or hit the T key. That way you are working with this Z-Sphere individually. Now I'm going to hit Shift while I'm rotating around on the outside and that'll straighten him right up. I'm also going to do something fairly fancy. I'm going to hit the X key, and what that's going to do is bring up symmetry. And you see, if you look oh, really Oh, come closely, on. They know that. You'd already mentioned that in one of the videos. I'm just, well, they should I, know it. I don't know what videos they're watching and which ones they are. So you'll notice I'm in draw mode. Right. Now, if I... It, without even worrying about draw mode, mm -hmm. if I hit the A key right now, check this out. Yeah. This is the mesh so far that is being created, defined by this Z-sphere hierarchy being, in this case, only one sphere. If I come in here and I draw another sphere on here, and that's it. If I rotate around, you see what we got. Mm -hmm. Hit A again, boom. Cool. We have a new mesh. Now, it's not just all about drawing. We can move these guys around, too. So I can grab Move and pull this around. Let me back up a little bit. And I know I always will talk like I'm moving a camera around. I know I'm not actually moving a camera around. This is actually scaling everything up and down. But I'm so ingrained in the 3D world that I will talk like I'm tumbling around a camera and zooming in and out. And you know what? With that being said, we'll just say it's a stipulation to how you will speak from now on in regards to manipulating tools that are yeah. in your scene. And if I feel the urge to keep apologizing, just bear with me. So uh, we can move these around, as you see here. And again, you see how that changes our resultant mesh. We can scale these up and down. So I can make this guy a whole lot bigger. And again, we get a very different mesh. And I'm going to scale it back down because it's scary. Now you're tapping the A key? I keep tapping the A key over and over. And what that's doing is bringing up a quick preview mode to show what my skin looks like. Right. That membrane that I was talking about in the previous video. We can also rotate these spheres around so I just kind of flip that around 180 degrees and you can see we're getting some twisting in the mesh which can be useful or it can be annoying depending on your point of view in terms of what you want your final mesh to look like now this is an extremely basic example but we can draw in all kinds of different ways you already saw how I can just get right on an existing sphere I can drag and create more spheres switch over to the move mode now, notice I'm getting some really weird movement behavior. I'll talk about why that is later on. I don't want to get too off topic. Okay. Um, I can also create spheres in the middle here. So all I did was click. I was in draw mode and just And just went back over. Yeah, any of these little connector guys here and just click on them. Gotcha. And it okay. makes a brand new sphere. Now, you'll see I'm switching between modes very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because we have some hotkeys, and I'm a big proponent of hotkeys. Me and hotkeys, we're like this, and you guys can't see me hold my cross fingers up. We have Q for draw mode, we have W for move, we have E for scale, and we have R for rotate. Gee, I wonder if that's used everywhere else in the world Yeah, these and pretty days. much every other major 3D app out there. The funny thing is, though, they still put M, S, and R. R <laughs> on the icons, which I think is just psychological warfare on the yeah. part of Pixel Logic. But I can switch over to move and, and just start moving this around. And you see I'm just creating a more interesting shape, I suppose. And then tap A and there's our result. Hey, it's like a yoke from a, uh, an airplane. It kind of is. So that's really it. That's kind of all I was trying to, to get across here. This is, again, the dirtiest possible rundown of using Z-spheres. You'll draw in your initial sphere. You'll draw additional spheres on that. You can move, rotate, and scale these spheres. At any time, you can tap the A key and see what your preview mesh looks like. Now, you do have some controls over this preview mesh. Not the kind of thing I want to get into right at the moment. Okay. But at any time, just to show you kind of the, the full 360-degree circle of the workflow, I can come up here to Make Poly Mesh 3D. Mm -hmm. Click on that, and suddenly this is no longer Z-spheres. This is, in fact, a bunch of polygons that I can now sculpt. 
and gotcha. do things with. Uh, so I could come down to the geometry tab. I can click divide and maybe a couple of times, take my brush size down, and I can start sculpting on this. Nice. And turn it into anything that I want. So that's it. Are there any questions? Yeah, so in, as far as branching off within the hierarchy goes with the Z spheres, it's just a matter of going back to a previous sphere, yeah. and clicking and dragging from there? Yeah, I could now notice over here in my tool thing, I still have Z sphere one. Mm -hmm. I can switch back over to this, tap the A key again. Nice. Now, you'll, you'll notice I lost all mm -hmm. of my sculpting and all that. But if you, you know, switch over to a poly mesh a little too soon, notice this is PM3D, mm -hmm. Z-Sphere 1. That tells you that's a poly mesh 3D, as you probably already guessed. Uh, the Z-Sphere 1 object is what I was working on before. And I can just continue to branch off in this hierarchy. And I, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. I just sure. I like symmetry. But we can turn that off uh, by tapping the X key. And I can continue to draw spheres and continue to move stuff around and make even more outlandish hierarchies. I do want to point out, however, you'll notice as I click on each one of these spheres that we have this, it, and it looks almost like a joint from Maya, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with that. This little pointing shape here just shows you the flow of the hierarchy. You'll notice this is our root sphere. Okay. Because we're branching out in both directions and it just continues on down the chain. Sure. So, also, I guess uh, without trying to get too over the top, I will mention that if you draw a sphere that you don't want, you can go over to draw mode and hold down the alt key and click on that sphere. Oh, very nice. And you can kill it. And I'll just mention this. I'm trying to alt click on my root sphere and that does not work. That's because he's uh, without that, you don't really have the object anymore. Okay. So also, so we don't need to worry about orientation of these Z spheres for controlling children branches because that's really uh, all about just moving we use the rotation just to control the way that's, that the edges are going to flow well that's involved um <laughs> I, sorry actually, yeah no i have individual videos lined up for how uh, rotation works it works in a couple of different ways oh, okay i was just curious yeah but i mean just as a quick example i can go over to rotate and i can use this. nice so you still can get yeah the... so i have all kinds of control it really just depends on where you're clicking and dragging okay and i'm gonna break that out into separate videos just so that people who see the title hey rotate how does rotate work they can reference that very quickly okay cool so any other questions no that'll do it all right cool well that's going to wrap things up for this video thanks a lot